Hello, this is going to be my review of the Pimeroni weather station kit that you can buy. So the main box is this one here. This comes with the small weather vane for the wind speed. It has a shorter cable than the other ones. It has the other wind dial for the direction, which has a much longer cable on it. You get two mounting poles, one, sorry, one slots into the other one like this. You get a little bracket, I'll show you in a minute. You get a water, or sorry, a rain um, sensor, meter cable again. You get a clamp to hold the rain thing onto the um, metal poles. And in addition to this, you get two ring fasteners here. I presume this is if you want to clamp it onto something like another weather pole in your garden or something. So it's just another ring fastener metal screw um, tightened with a screwdriver type thing. You get two of those. You get some long cable um, ties. And then you get another small package here, which is shorter cable ties and a little Velcro thing and some little roll plugs with the screw in there. I'm not sure what they're for actually. Then you actually get the brains of it. This is the Enviro weather unit here. Okay, it's ridiculously small how big the sensor is, but this is the Enviro weather. That's the jack for the leads for the various weather sensors. And where is it? This tiny, tiny, tiny little square is the actual square that does the pressure, the temperature, the humidity, and that's it, I think, isn't it? And then the other one is the light sensor over there. So it's an absolutely tiny unit, and it has the Raspberry Pi Zero on the back. That's wireless. That big fat chip there, I think, is the wireless chip. So we'll leave, leave, leave that alone for a moment. Then in this one here, I have a Velcro tie and a little uh, AAA battery pack. This is the thing that's going to power the Raspberry Pi, or sorry, the entire Enviro weather unit on the back of it. In addition, some more screws in here. There's no instructions, not that there's much needed, but it's kind of left up to you as to how you want to go about assembling this. In addition to this, you also get the rain sensor or Stevenson box type thing. So this is just a plastic shell really. So it's just this. Okay. And your Enviro weather is going to sit inside of this thing here. This will just twist and unlocks. I think you can just Velcro your Enviro weather onto this and Velcro the um, battery pack onto the back. This is all inside, that's kind of baffled or whatever the word is, so the rain can't get in. And that should allow you to take the pressure and temperature readings without any obstruction and keep the unit dry as well. Okay, after that you kind of just basically have to put it up as you see fit yourself. So how this all goes together, or at least how I think it goes together, is the following. So we take our two rods here, this one goes into this one a kind of friction fit held together. Now, next is this kind of Y-shaped piece here. This is meant to slot in. There's a little notch here. So it slots in, it should anyway. Yep. Okay, so that slots into here. Next is this little mounting bracket here. Hopefully I've loosened up. So I put this in here and I just simply screw up um, friction tighten this with some screws. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's the unit now. Then the weather sensor for the wind speed will go here. The one for the wind direction will go there. And the bucket has a little recess for this hole here. Yeah. 
and then that should be your unit and that's all set up ready to go now what i don't like about this is there's actually no mounting pin in the set so i think what it wants you to do is to use those ring fasteners to tighten it onto an existing pole in your garden i don't have any pole but i do have the side of a shed which i'm going to use instead it's not ideal because one side of the wind is going to be blocked from me but short of it going up 10 meters on top of a roof i don't have any way around that so what i'm going to do instead is to use a mounting system from something else Oops. i'm going to put this away for a sec So by the way, all of those wires there will all actually tidy up inside the little Stevenson box that you get with it as well. There's a little hole for that. So I'm going to um, loosen this piece again. Okay. Now what I went out and bought actually was a satellite dish mounting set. So I bought this cheapest one I could find in Screwfix, which is this L-shaped bracket here incredibly lightweight whatever it is some sort of aluminium or something and then this comes with a mounting bracket for a wall so i think a satellite mounting bracket is the easiest one to they're the name that they give for these things so this is the mounting bracket there's a little u-shaped threaded pin inside the set this goes into here this goes into the wall and then thankfully this tube itself is smaller than this tube and this one will just sit inside not like this and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wedge something in just to keep it held with friction and that should be enough there should be very little weight on this okay and then the other thing just to mention is the little um, as I'm calling the Stevenson box or the weather box has a mounting pin at the side, and I think that's what some of the um, cable ties are for. That will just clip onto the side of this, like this. Okay, and that's it. So that's how I'm going to install it. So when you're going to see it next, it's going to be up in the wall, and then we'll go over some of the software on side of it. So I now need to connect the power to my Enviro unit. So. This is my Enviro weather unit here. This is the weather box hat. And this is my power supply here. So I should just mention, actually with the kit, I noticed that there was two Amazon Basics alkali batteries in it. I'm not going to be using those. I went and got some Duracell or whatever rechargeable batteries. If I had Eneloops, I would use those instead. Now, I noticed two things that were kind of interesting here. It's the following. I have a rain bucket sensor with an RJ11 jack. Wind speed with a shorter RJ11 jack. And wind vane with a longer RJ11 jack. And I only have two RJ11 jacks here labeled wind and rain. So after looking, I noticed that the wind vane has an RJ11 socket in here, which I'm guessing the shorter wind speed one plugs into, and that makes sense then for the one longer cable to run down the pole and back up into the Stevenson box, and similarly one longer cable for the rain meter to run down and back up for the Stevenson box. So that explains why one cable is shorter than the other. Now, the next thing is, this is clearly a set that's not meant as a set. In other words, just scrambled together. So I took my power adapter here and Velcroed it onto the only bit it would fit into. The Enviro would not fit into here. It was just a bit too wide. So that's the power adapter here. There's actually no way to fit the Enviro nicely, as I can see. If it goes this direction sideways, this thing won't fit in because that's a little bit narrower on the inside. I also want to have access to the the um, the um, wake up button or power button here, and the reset button here. And there's some sort of button called boot sequencing here, 
it might be important at some other time and that's where the battery power plugs into here so you really haven't got too many different ways to mount this there is holes for mounting it but this thing is too narrow for that so there's no real nice solution here so what i think i'm going to do is the following i'm going to dab a piece of hot glue down here and then just let it rest up like this the hot hot glue should keep it in place like that when it's like this i have access to the wake up button here i have access from the side to the reset button i have access to the orj11 jacks here and i have access to the power button before i do it here so i'm just going to hot glue it like this and then most importantly i'm hoping that the light sensor can collect enough light even when it's inside the box ideally to go outside but hopefully inside the box there's some threshold thing i can use to um zero that out to the correct level okay so hopefully this will work oh and the last thing i should mention is the little hole for running the cables through here is far too small to fit even one of these orgy 11s let alone two of them through so i just grabbed a step fit and just did this to widen it out i went down one two three four five steps on the step bit there okay just basically eyeballed it and just Scoot it in there and the plastic is nice and sort of, um, it's not sharp so it shouldn't interfere with the cables. This is going to be at the bottom, the rain should fall down around it and nothing should go back up. Okay, let's see how this works. So I've hot glued this in here, that's the way it's looking now. Everything seemed perfect. I have my battery pack here and I went to check the enclosure on it. Unfortunately, the enclosure is tapered in so much, it mightn't look like much, but actually the width of the battery pack is too fat for it. The Enviro can't fit inside this thing here because this is too narrow, so you can't put that in there. Um, I've tried laying it flat in here in the middle. No, this is still too narrow for it when it goes this way. I literally can't think of any other way where it fits easily, so what I have to do is just get my pliers undo the little power strip here leave this out and i'm going to have to run the power from the bottom up with all my other switches and this unit here is just going to have to be left outside i'll run something around it a plastic bag or something to keep it out of the rain but yeah something to keep in mind Hello and welcome to the next part of this installation video. So the first thing we're going to do is learn how to get the data off our Enviro weather unit. How I'm going to do this is using MQTT. Now I have never used this before so I'd look up some guides. This was the best guide I was able to find here using what's called Mosquito and I'm running it on an Ubuntu 2.0.0.4 server at my home and it seemed to work out okay. So this video here, link in the, in, the, in the description, is quite good. It got me through everything I needed to do. Now, when I was doing this here, I get my Mosquito server running. This is what this terminal is here. That's fine. This is just me going through all the settings. It's all covered in the video far better than I can do it. But the only thing to be careful of is this. After you do the subscription, sorry, the publication and the subscription to test that everything is working out, at that stage, you're ready to go ahead and commission your Enviro unit. By that, I mean give it a name. The commissioning, I found a video for this, provisioning your Pimeroni. From this video here, it's a very long stream, but this particular five minutes of the stream, he tells you how to provision it. In doing this, you have to give your Enviro a name, okay? The name I chose to give my Enviro was Pikmin, P-I-K-M-I-N. So you can see it down here on my terminal that's actually listening for the data as we speak. So on this one here, so you can see it's listening for the device and the device is called Pikmin. Now, it took me a long time to realize that even though the device is called Pikmin, the subscription that you have to listen for is Enviro forward slash Pikmin, 
okay? Not just Pikmin. So I was listening forever for Pikmin. There was nothing coming through. But once I asked it for Enviro forward slash Pikmin, then I get all my data coming back to me, okay? So the data here is just coming in very slowly, but it's coming in every 15 minutes for what I want to. And you can kind of see the nice readings here. So I'm getting a light, light measurement, rain measurements, timestamps, wind speeds, so on and so on and forth. Okay, so that's all the things that we have there. So we hooked up the Enviro, installed the MQQT software, commissioned the Enviro. Now in the, you commission it to Enviro forward slash Pikmin, wait, and then you should see the measurements coming in. When you're doing this the first time, I would just recommend that you set it up to take as measurements as fast as possible and upload them as fast as possible, just as a kind of a proof of, proof of concept and stay with, well within your Wi-Fi range at this point, okay? Once you're confident how that's working, then you can go ahead and put it outside at longer intervals and wait to see what happens. Okay, after this, set the desired time intervals, uploads, and get ready to install the setup outside. And then the last part is the kind of DIY part of it that I only discovered after when I was trying to make this video here. So if I go on to the website that actually sells this, okay, this is Pimeroni. This is not the actual product I bought. This is the product without the, without the Enviro unit. This is just the sensor unit, okay? And this actually shows you what you actually get in the kit, but unless you kind of know to go looking on the web page for this product that you don't particularly want, you want the one with the Enviro kit, if you don't already have it, you kind of might not come across this thing here. But when you do come across this one here, it actually gives you a starter guide on how to use it. And I kind of wish I had read this before or seen it, and it kind of goes through all the kind of pitfalls that I had of going through it. Okay, so this is what's in the contents of the package, the reservoirs, things like this, how these are working, all this sort of stuff. Also, in addition, there is kind of data sheets and guides for how to convert all the numbers because you're just getting raw numbers at this stage. You're going to have to do a little bit more work on the computer to interpret the numbers just to make sure that everything's coming in the way you think it's meant to be coming in. Okay. And also, this is where you can just find out data sheets for these other kind of standard sensors that are on the unit. This is for a particular thing. But the Pimeroni website is good, if, albeit it's not particularly tied together for things like this. Okay. Lastly, I should have actually so the next thing here, is then so just to actually install the weather station. For me to record the information coming in from the Enviro from the broker, I simply pipe the output into an open text file. I have no idea if this is the best way to do it or not, but it's the only idea that came to mind. So my Mosquito um, subscription from the host number, this, and the um, the name of the service is Enviro Pikmin, and then piping in this symbol here into just an open text file, and that text file is now just constantly being written to, and I can open it if I need to on the other end. I found out if you open it up as a CSV and just set the delimiters to commas and colons, not semicolons, colons, then it actually displays quite nice in a spreadsheet, at which point you can start making graphs and so on like it. Thank you. And this is the final installation for the weather station. So hopefully you can see. Yes. So if we just go up on the ladder here. This is the um, installation mounting bracket for the satellite antenna. And then this is the weather station.